Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're gonna unbox an $80 rare coin grab bag. Now, I ordered this from a friend of mine who also is a dealer out of Nevada, but it's always cool to get a new source for grab bags, see what we can you know, find, and if there's any neat coins to add to my collection, and of course, if we can make our money back. So, let's head into the video, start unboxing, and see what we can come up with. And now it's time to open the inner bag up and see what's inside. So I'm just gonna rip it open and I'll be right back in just a few seconds. Okay, so I've got everything in front of me. It looks off the bat, that looks like a clad quarter. That looks like a regular quarter. And I just adjusted the uh, sort of camera so that it could be at a slightly better angle. Uh, that's better for filming, but I think, so there's two graded coins. I think I'm gonna save some of the graded stuff for later, but this all looks like some interesting um, coinage, so I'll be curious to see sort of what we're dealing with. Um, looks like some moderns, but it looks like there also could be some better coins in the mix. So let's start out down here. We've got a dime 1962. Looks like a proof um, a Roosevelt dime. And I do think, I forget if there is a variety or not, but you also want to look for cameo on this where there's a lot of contrast between sort of like the torch and the leaves and the rest of it. Same thing with Roosevelt's face and the fields. This is not going to be cameo. Maybe it would have been a little bit on the back, but it all depends on how early in the dies that are used to strike these, how early in the strikes there. If it's super early, you have a much higher likelihood of having the um, cameo sort of frosty strike. Now this one looks like actually a decent shaped buffalo nickel, so I think that there would be a little bit of extra bonus points for the condition of this buffalo nickel, um, because it does have a lot of luster. Um, it, you want to look for the mesa effect to see if it has been worn, um, and it has been worn 1936, um, but it still has a lot of eye appeal, would look really nice in like a beginning typeset or something like that. So that's going to be worth more than just like a dollar or something, maybe, I don't know, in the range of three dollars or something even higher than that. Um, let's see what else. We've got that one. Looks sort of silver. It might be 1962. I'm curious what this says um, or what this is. And it's going to be a Jefferson nickel with some interesting toning. 1976, I think, um, on the back. Whoa. Uh, you do see a lot of really nice rainbow colors and contrast. I was going to say also something that I'm definitely looking for is going to be the full steps. It does not look like this had the strength of strike to have full steps there, but it's neat. Um, and I think, you know, it's challenging for me to value this um, right on the spot for a grab bag. I think certainly it's going to be worth more than five cents um, uh, just because of the sort of really nice condition. Uh, I think that there are enough hits on the front where it's not going to be worth grading, but it's still, um, you know, I don't know, might be a few bucks or something, sort of a neat um neat thing to keep this grab bag going in terms of its value right here um, we've got another buffalo nickel um, and again has has similar like there's a little bit of luster left it looks good um, on the front of the coin here looks like a 1929 so that is uh that's neat uh, a few spots on the front but again i think that the eye appeal here slightly earlier date makes that a better coin so that's something else. Let's see. It looks like another, or not another, but just a Franklin half back there. Uh, I've been looking at this for a while. Uh, it looks like something of a proof coin, um, and there are a fair amount of proof varieties, and it's going to be a proof 1958. It looks nice. Um, yeah, you know, it looks like a sort of middle of the road, um, you, you know, like no problems, not probably going to be like a 68, 69 as far as I know, but... Um, yeah, pretty coin, and that one is going to be worth well above its 90% silver content, um, so that's really, really neat. Uh, so an uh, another good coin here. Um, this one also, this is going to be a, let's see, Denver Mint um, Roosevelt Dime, uncirculated condition. The front is going to be 1960, so I think this one, you know, the uncirculated Roosevelt Dimes don't have massive premiums, but it's going to be better than like $2. I can tell you that might be 3 might be 4 might be a little bit more than that. I always try to value it based off what they're selling on on eBay in 1936 here, looking for the Denver Mint Mark for the three and a half legs. Um, but this one's just going to be a regular Buffalo Nickel. So not bad there. Then this one, let's see, has been 
Oh, we got a, looks like a penny, regular penny, 1975. Um, I'm going to look closely for varieties because there might be some um, that I haven't thought. Honestly, even though it's like a red penny and maybe it's like a mid state 65, I probably would not value that too high uh, if there is no variety on it. Um, that's just how I see the coins. Maybe I'm too old school, not knowing what the modern coins, um, sort of what their values are, but that's how I think about something like that. Here we've got a, another 1936 um, Buffalo nickel. So, uh, and I should check. I feel like there's a double die on the front. Maybe I'm wrong, um, you know, but there could be some other cool stuff for me to look out for. Here we've got a Franklin half dollar. Um, looks sharp on the back. Does not look like there's going to be full bell lines. We've got the D mint mark Denver up there. This is one where there's a lot of doubling. 1960. And I'm forgetting if there is a variety or not, but this one's pretty. Uh, it's a nice mint state, uh, and I think certainly would fetch, I don't know, at least 15, 20 bucks, something in that range. Um, but really nice. I like the sort of dark toning. It, it is attractively toned, even, even though it's not blast white. I, I view this as a nicely toned specimen. So that's a, a good sort of solid coin that has some undisputable value. Um, then we've got this coin which is going to be, let's see, is that a slight, hmm, I don't think that that's laminate, that might be a little bit of a lamination or struck through, something minor. Um, the steps could be somewhat full on the front, 1973D. Um, you know, this one is pretty clean, so you can, you know, you can't see a ton of hits, like I think the other uncirculated Jefferson nickel, I felt like definitely had a lot more hits on it. I'm not still an expert of grading like moderns, um, but eh, they're, 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 well, maybe that's just in the design um, that now that I see them on both, but I, I actually don't think so because it's slightly different between the two. Anyways, those ones are not the ones I'm going to be confident valuing super high. I am more interested in something like this, which looks like maybe a silver proof. Um, so this one is going to be 1960. Um, interesting quarter with some cool toning. You can see some hues of sort of blue on the bottom. Um, so yeah, not bad. That's, uh, you know, s some, some bonus toning. Very fun. Um, let's see if it's, yeah, it looks like, looks proof to me. So, um, the 1960 would not be from the same proof set because obviously, um, the proof sets don't have the Denver mint mark. They're not made in Denver. So we still have uh, a few coins left here. It looks like there are three in or four looks like they might all be um, the quarters but our first one I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so that we can get this um, is an interesting let's see if let's play guess the grade to see if I can guess the grade before I unveil it really nice on the back it looks clad to me and it is a 1986 D quarter um, I'm gonna say hmm I want to say mint state well it could be 65 but I think it's really sharp on the front so i would say 66 on this um and it's going to be a mid state 66 quarter so that's interesting because you know it's, it's not something i know quite as much about as like grading the moderns um you know people are often seeing something like this hoping for what i assume is a 67 or 68 um just because of the value at which this was put in the bag and if you can get sort of the top top tier of the modern grades. You can have hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of coins purely based on the conditional um, value. So this one, nice coin. I wonder if a little bit of a, um, hmm, I'm trying to see where the hit might be that would have taken it down. You know, there's a few specs in the field, but it actually looks pretty nice. So that one's a really cool coin. And then this one, definitely this is sort of the cameo that I was discussing. Now this one looks more modern where they all had the cameos and yeah here it's 1986s um it's probably going to be a proof 69 um but i'm not sure what sort of the upper rarity value of 69 versus 70 is um because it's tough to get 70s and whoa um that's really cool proof 70 deep cameo quarter and yeah i have no idea what the value on something like this would be but I know that people do make money by submitting stuff that's going to come back 70, and there can be nice 
values to them. So I'm excited to do the research and figure out what we've got because this could definitely have a huge upswing on the value side. Really cool to see the 70 because it's just a grade that's tough to get. I remember I graded one thing that was like a 71S um, Eisenhower and it came back proof 70 deep cam. And it was a really good grade. So um, definitely something you should be aware of if you can sort of have the eye you know that that means i think at five or ten times magnification you can't see any imperfections and here you know it's really flawless um you're going to look in the main parts uh as you know like the main parts obviously for the scratches or hits and there weren't any there so that's really nice and then this one also has a little bit of sort of original luster left an attractive coin 1936 buffalo nickel um, I'll be consistent with my valuations on the better ones. And our last coin is going to be, let's see, some type. It looks like a proof silver. And it's going to be a cool proof uh, 1958 toned silver quarter. That does look pretty interesting to me. Um, so has some sort of fun if you tilt it at the right angle. Um, it's, it's developed a nice thick uh, layer of toning on the front. And that is super interesting. So... I uh, really like how that looks. You know, it's not quite rainbowy, but it's tough with like the texture of the slightly older proofs um, to get like perfect toning on them. I think like uh, blast white coins definitely tone easier, but hey, I think we did great. Um, I'm not totally sure on the values um, just because I don't really know what these two bad boys are trading for, um, but we got the 1986 squad plus some nice silver material. So I think for um, an $80 grab bag when you think about the person has to take the time to make it up and pack it up, ship it, and, you know, would have spent the the presumably grading fees on some of this. Um, you know, we get a solid batch of silver. You know, you can count at least here, you know, a dollar, I don't know, dollar thirty, forty five or so of silver face value and proofs that's higher end. So that's already brings you to like minimum i don't know 35 dollars or 40 bucks and then to have some other cool stuff to round it out seems reasonable to me so excited to see what you guys think let me know would you have bought this for 80 bucks and tell me what you think in the comments i always like testing out new sources having fun going through and getting certainly a different mix of items i haven't seen too much in the way of graded super moderns like that and I find it an interesting game that I don't know too much about in terms of how to make sort of top pop really cool new modern stuff. So I'll have to contact the seller and talk to him a little bit about that. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated. I've also got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can follow me there. Um, TreasureTownYT.com is the main channel website. Definitely give that a visit. I've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel. Uh, CoinGrabBag.com as well currently redirects there, but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags, both made by me and other sellers. A lot of different options, so that's a good way to support. Um, there's also TreasureTownCoins.com. In the future, my coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website. Uh, CoinMeltPrice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both U.S. and world world a lot of resources in that website and then coinsmetalscards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins metals cards and collectibles in general so i'll see you on my future videos looking forward to seeing you there and hope you have a good day